Okay, we are live. Hey, Lauren. Hey, Eli. Good afternoon, guys. Hi, Allison. Hi, Ann. Hi, Lori. Hey, Chip. Thanks for joining us this afternoon. So just like every other uh, event, we will start at 12.05. So thanks for joining us this afternoon. Hi, Tracy. Hey, Serena. Hi, Shelly. Thanks for joining us today. If you guys want to go ahead and introduce yourself through the chat again, um, that would be awesome. Hi, Kip. <laughs> so who's ready for the walk challenge to be over? Are you guys, are you sick of us yet? I'm not. <laughs> Lauren, I'm with you, my friend. I'm, the two workout classes in a row uh, got me pretty good too. Mm-hmm. I'm so sore as well. <clears throat> Tracy, I'm glad you've had awesome. fun meeting with your coworkers. That's awesome. We're very happy to hear that. Hey, Dan Knopp. <laughs> we miss you. Aw. Hi, Dan. Hey, Jerry. Good to, good to see you on the chat. Hey, Kendra. <laughs> uh, well. Julie Brock says to keep it going. I, I will uh, mention that I think Susan G. Komen is going to continue their Get Up Challenge. So you have free virtual workouts that you still have at your disposal and for the, the Atlanta Track Club. So you at least have that. Right, Julie? <laughs> Jerry wants it to keep going too, so we might have to look into something next year. Yeah. Oh, Shelly, uh, I'm so glad you got your t-shirt. That's awesome. Um, what do they look like? I haven't seen them yet. I, I'm having mine mailed to me. Hey guys, if you're just joining us, glad to have you here. Happy Friday. Um, we'll get started in about two minutes. Um, and if you haven't introduced yourself through the chat yet, go ahead and say hi um, and let us know who you are. Hey Beth. Oh no, Julie's on there. She's the one who set the bar for these tours. So <laughs> I'm intimidated now. Wayne, I see you raised your hand. Do you have a question? <laughs> hey Mo, happy Friday to you too. Hey, hey Noel. <laughs> You're right, Ann. <laughs> hey, Andres, glad to join that you're here today. Um, Denise has a lot to say about Path 400, so I'm glad you're interested. <clears throat> All right, and if you haven't introduced yourself, go ahead and do that through the chat again. And welcome if you're just joining us. Hi, Rhonda, we're so glad that you're able to join us. We will be talking about the Peachtree Creek Greenway and the presentation, so you'll, you'll get a nice shout out. <laughs> hey, Jen, all right. It is 12.05, so thank you guys so much for joining us this afternoon. This is our last 
virtual presentation webinar for Buckhead Walks. Um, and I think it's our most important and most interesting presentations um, <laughs> because it's about us. <laughs> so uh, without further ado, I'll have, uh, Denise Starling, our executive director at Livable Buckhead is uh, gonna share her favorite parts of Path 400. Great, thanks everyone, happy Friday. I'd like to uh, start by thanking all of you for taking part in the Walk Challenge this month. This has been a fantastic event and kudos to Anna and Katie for the great job they've done in retooling it and taking it virtual. I think it's been a lot of fun and you all deserve a big round of applause and a pat on your back for getting off your butts and doing something healthy during the lockdown. So congratulations to all of you. So this is the final virtual tour of the challenge, as Anna said, and the pressure is really on because the rest of these tours have been really fantastic. And Julie Brock, you terrified me when I saw the first one and knew what I was in for. So fantastic job and thanks to all of our partners for doing these. Um, I hope I can live up to that today. And as Anna mentioned, the tour I'm gonna be doing for you is my favorite parts of Path 400. So we're gonna start it off with a little poll. And don't worry, it's an easy one. It's just a simple yes or no. Have you ever been on Path 400? Okay, we'll give it a few seconds to let everyone put in their answer. Glad to see I'm, I'm seeing mostly the right answer. There is a right okay. answer here. <laughs> <laughs> There's one that'll make me cry if you're saying that might be the wrong answer. Great. Okay, go ahead. So what are, what's it looking like? All right. Wow. 74% of you have been on it. You just made my day. Thank you. <laughs> so, all right. Well, now you're going to now put on your running shoes because I got a lot of stuff I'm going to show you here. So, we're going to start maybe. Start. I clicked the button and it did nothing. Huh. That's interesting. Might have a little lag. There we go. So we're going to start with a little orientation and really start up at the big picture. So the graphic that you're looking at now is the regional trail multi-use trail network that's coming together in the Atlanta region. There's a lot more trails that are out there, but these are the big ones that really kind of show you the trunk lines that connect everything and provide that regional um, connectivity that's so important for the other trails to feed off of. And there are two things I want to highlight for you on this map. The first is that you'll notice Path 400 opens up the entire North Metro area to be able to access the Beltline. So the little kind of V you see at the top off Path 400, that's roughly at 285. So really does uh, provide a lot of connectivity for Dunwoody and Sandy Springs. The second part is the two green dots. So these represent major junctions in the trail network. And I like to think of these as kind of the money shots for the overall system. And one of them is anchored by Path 400 right in Lindbergh, right in our backyard. And so this is my favorite, kind of the thing I like to call this is angel hair junction, just to play on our you know, favorite Atlanta traffic snarl of Spaghetti Junction. So what I also need you all to understand about the project is how it's happening. You all know LBI is a really small organization. I think you all by now know probably most of our staff. So there was no way we could have pulled this off on our own. We've had some tremendous partners in the project and some of which might surprise you. In fact, let's take a little poll to see if you can guess which organization is not a partner in the project. This one might be a little harder. Are we tripping anybody up? Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that laugh sounded a little too evil. <laughs> <laughs> Give it a few more seconds. Okay, how do we look? Okay. Wow. I knew I'd get you with Atlanta Public Schools. 
So those of you who said none of the above are got this correct. Every one of these organizations plays a part in Path 400. So uh, at last count, we had like 35 different organizations who had a direct role in the, the trail itself. So now I'm gonna show you a little bit of, uh, orient you to where we are overall. You can see we're zooming here into Buckhead. This is what um, is considered to be the broader Buckhead area. And you can see Path 400 running right down the green line in the middle there, which is basically Howard Shooks Council District. And um, it's also the lowest parked council district in the city of Atlanta. But what I'd like to do is uh, really focus on the map to the right. This is a deeper dive in to orient you to the tour we're gonna be following today. So you can see, if you keep your eye on this map, it'll show, there'll be a little blue dot that's gonna follow us through our tour. And um, the northernmost part of this map, so up here is, just below where the toll plaza used to be, it's the last bridge, Lordens Drive is the last bridge if you're headed into the city of Atlanta. And then the bottom down here goes all the way down to where the Sweetwater Brewery and all of that stuff is on the south. So we'll be going through this entire way to show you um, some of the features of Path 400. And one of the things that's really cool is even though our maps stop right at the city limits, Path 400 is already going up into Sandy Springs and it's even programmed and being built as part of the 285 to 400 interchange. So it is really exciting to have that happen and uh, it'll tie in where Peachtree Dunwoody Road uh, goes underneath that, that interchange. So I'm gonna start the tour with our, our, the first stop on the tour is a park that we've created. It's called Loridan's Park. Uh, we actually negotiated the transfer of property that was owned by Atlanta Public Schools over to the City of Atlanta's Parks Department to create this as a park for an amenity for Path 400. Other than being the former location of McClatchy Elementary School prior to its demolition for the highway, its history goes even further back to include some spicy stuff. The top right corner up here is one of the oldest family cemeteries in the city. It was the Lowry Stevens family and has approximately 28 graves that we've all we've identified and located. Some of those are children and some are believed to be slaves as well. But the coolest part about this cemetery is the first documented burial was in 1852 and it was necessitated because of a quarrel between two Buckhead settlers that ended up in murder. James Lowry Jr. was shot and killed by George Washington Evans after the men quarreled at a nearby property sale. Now that property, it's not said specifically, but the way it's written in the, the history records, that property that they were arguing over is believed to have been a slave. So there are only two remaining markers that are actually even in existence for this cemetery, and those are safely stored over at the Atlanta History Center now. Another part that's really cool on the old maps for this site is there actually are some anti-aircraft military installations that were further down, roughly where this neighborhood is, which makes sense if you think about this being in the flight path for Dobbins Air Force Base. But in more modern times, some of our awesome local company partners, Stephanie with QGenda, are you on the call today? Hopefully you are has adopted this park and is working with us to help it take shape. So you see some great pictures here of the the days that Anna has planned and gotten volunteers out and engaged in this park. So um, the image on the left is the vision for the park. What you'll see is Path 400 really hugging the sound wall adjacent to the highway. And then it really preserves the tree canopy and you know, keeps a real natural feel through here and makes sure that we are actually um, restoring that cemetery as part of the project. So now we come to the next stop on our tour. This is um, Mountain Way Common. And who would have thought that a piece of land under a highway bridge would make a great place for a park? Well, this highway you see up here, that's Georgia 400. It's about 80 feet in the air. And Little Nancy Creek comes right through the middle down here. So what we're gonna do, Path 400 is coming up right in this section here, up at the highway level. It's gonna weave between these columns, which is gonna be quite the engineering feat. And then it's gonna head north on the other side of the highway, but then it'll also have another piece that will be a slow ramp down to access the park. 
What's really interesting about this park, it's about an eight acre park and it's still owned by GDOT. And because of that, we're not allowed to call it a park. So I like to call it our non-park park just to be a jerk to GDOT sometimes. So as I said, it's about nine, nine or 10 acres and we have a group of dedicated volunteers, the Friends of Mountain Way Common, who have been really fantastic in working to develop this over the last several years. They, um, their interest really started when uh, one of their neighbors was mugged running on the local roadway. And so they really took it on to say, this is, this is not okay, we're reclaiming this area. The upside down image in the middle is intentionally upside down because it is oriented. You're looking, this bridge you're looking at is the bridge right here in the photo. And so this shows you the vision for the future development of the park. And we're actually working right now, the construction will happen in the next few weeks to build out the trail on this side over here. So, and I'd also like to draw your attention to this piece up here in the corner, the little orange place, because that is the next stop on our tour. So this is 684 Mountain Orchard. And what's cool about this is it's a small piece of land that was gifted to Livable Buckhead by longtime owner, Mr. Green, about two years ago. It's owned by Livable Buckhead now and it'll forever be preserved as green space. That's one of our goals is adding green space to the Buckhead community. So the top of the slide shows you the vision plan for the area, which is anchored by a small orchard right here in the middle. And then it has a picnic area over here and then crosses over to the, the main part of the park. Um, we've already gotten started on the orchard working with the Atlanta Local Food Initiative. We secured a small grant and got 10 fruit trees in here. There are three plum trees, three pawpaw trees, two apple trees, and two pear trees. And the image on the bottom that looks a little bit like the children of the corn is actually our planting day. That was the first weekend after we got, all got locked down. So this is our appropriately socially distanced event. And this is our tree guru, Robbie Astrove, who showed us how to prune these little trees. And I almost had heart failure when he did this because for fruit trees, you actually don't want a central trunk of a tree. You want them to branch out. And when he started cutting out the central trunks, I almost lost my mind. So the next stop on our tour is just below Waiuka. You can see you're following the little blue ball here. Um, this section of the trail required a huge long wall in it because we had taken out a berm that was really providing sound, uh, sound barrier for the adjacent homes. And the wall is like 12 feet high and 80 feet long. So when it was being designed, I was terrified it was going to look like the Great Wall of China. So I made the designers um, incorporate five sections that are reinforced with um, rebar to allow for us to do three-dimensional sculpture and attach it to the wall. Um, those, these walls have since become our first foray into public art and this was our very first um, paid artist work and it's entirely done out of chalk. Our artists um, Jesse and Zach did a great job and I like to think of this as path being the yellow brick road on the way to the emerald city of Buckhead. Now those walls have been a lot of fun. Um, so we liked activating them so much with that first one that we decided to do it again. And this time we got a few more artists engaged and let their inner geeks go wild. Of course, my inner geek kind of sparked this idea, but we'll just leave that alone. The new Star Wars movie was being released, so why not? The amazing part about this is these are all done in chalk. And even this detail of the hair in Yoda's ear was just simply amazing. I just absolutely loved, loved these, these uh, pieces of art. So those same walls took on yet another more serious personality thanks to the generosity of Kaiser Permanente. According to mentalhealthfirstaid.org, mental illness affects 5% of adults and that's about 44 million people each year. So in recognition, of that, of Mental Health Awareness Month, these five artists worked in tempera paint to bring messages of support to those who might be suffering from mental health issues. And back to a lighter approach, we, the next step with these walls is to take them to outer space. So they actually were part of a project out, Outer Space, which is an event series that merges public art, live music, design, action, sport, action sports, and culture. 
With an outdoor mural project at its core, the goal of the program is to enhance outdoor spaces, generate positive energy, expand the mind, and engage the public through urban beautification and creativity. So these five artists, you see them all named here, took over our walls and each brought their unique style to Path 400, offering a change of scenery for our regular trail users and bringing some much needed public art to Buckhead. So here's a fun fact for you. Did you know that public art is actually a safety feature? It's kind of amazing, but there's this whole um, program, it's called Crime Prevention Through Environmental Design. And essentially, it's based on the theory that if you are somewhere that you and you need assistance, you are going to remember something like this, like a public art feature, before you're going to remember something like a mile marker. So having these notable areas is actually something that helps us make the trail more safe for our trail users. Another cool feature is we do have, they're not our door, they're outdoor sharing libraries. Um, two a local Boy Scout and a lo local Girl Scout came to us and said they wanted to do some projects. So we've got two lending libraries on the trail, one by Wayuka and one down in Old Ivy Park. And now this one might surprise you. This is a kind of different take on artwork. It showed up all on its own and we liked it so much that we ran with it to encourage more. Who knew that rocks could provide such a great canvas and so much enjoyment for our budding artists to take part in? When you're trudging up that hill, right, the one you can see from the highway that you're it's kind of tall, um, if you need to take a scenic break to hide the fact that you're, you know, gasping for air and totally out of, out of shape, this is where you can look for those rocks. They're right up, um, as you see here, they're actually stacked up in the sound wall. So feel free to pick one up and take one home and add your own art to the trail. We just love that that started happening. Now moving down, you see where we are with the map on the right. This is Old Ivy Park. And it's another park that Livable Buck had acquired on behalf of the city of Atlanta um, as an amenity for PAL 400. And this is a cool small world story too, because we were building the trail and realized the design that we had on paper had the trail teeing in to the roadway here. If you can see my cursor, it was gonna be a straight shot into this roadway. Well, um, as a mother of a, at the time, seven-year-old, I was standing on that construction site looking at it and picturing my son totally out of control on his bike and going straight into that roadway. And obviously that is not something that we wanted to have happen. So. We modified the trail. We actually created this curve and super elevated it and put a berm here so we could enhance the safety of that side. But of course, when we decided to do that, we needed more room to swing the trail over. And there were, happened to be like five gorgeous old water oaks leaning perilously, perilously over the trail here at the same time too. And they weren't in the best of health. So we were already looking at, oh gosh, we got to talk to that property owner to have those trees taken out. And then we realized the house was for sale. So we um, approached the agent who I happened to know and then found out that we happened to know the owners too. And so what ended up being, you know, what we thought was going to be a real issue to begin with became a great legacy opportunity for the, um, the Crydell family who worked with us to purchase this property and have it become Old Ivy Park. So this slide in the middle shows you the vision for the park and there are actually three different sections to it. The first one is the stormwater preserve, the second one is a fitness tunnel, and the third one is what we call the living room. So the first part is the stormwater preserve. So we're gonna develop a nature walk, boardwalk, and potentially a pavilion in this area over on this side. Uh, what's really exciting about this is um, Storm, or uh, Riverkeeper founder Sally Bethay used to live right around here, and these are the headwaters for one of the tributaries to Little Nancy Creek that she used to play in as a kid. So it's got a really unique significance for us because of that. And what's happened in the last two weeks is GDOT, actually just settled a lawsuit, the Georgia DOT, and they're buying this house over here and we're working with them to deed it over to us to expand this park here. So we're very excited about that. The fitness tunnel is 
underneath Georgia 400. So this is actually the highway. It's elevated probably about 30 feet or so. So the roadway goes underneath. And so we're looking to create this as a fitness workout center and do some iconic lighting under there. Um, we also plan to do on-street art here on Old Ivy Road. And the reason for that is to really reclaim this roadway for, um, to get drivers to understand that this is a park that you're in and facilitate the crossing of Path 400, the trail right here that goes across the roadway. So that's something we do have a small grant um, to put the fitness equipment in place. So we'll be looking to get this started probably the late this year, beginning of next year. And then this is the main part of the park, what we call the living room. Um, so a lot of different features to it. There's a lot of topography on this corner. So it's a pretty tough site to deal with. It's also only about a half an acre, so it's not real big but we had a big focus on um, playable art. So this is one of the pieces where we were really excited about, I especially like these moguls back here. Can you imagine being a kid just rolling around on these? How fun would that be? So the challenge we have with this park is it's high design. And as you can tell, it's not something that you can really implement piecemeal. So we need to find a, a funder to build this out in its entirety. So we're still working on that. But in the meantime, we're making sure it looks great and keeping it nice and green and activating it. Um, Anna's been out here doing movies in the park and dog training and also team building events as well, which you can see here. So a big shout out to Salesforce on this one. Um, some of you have obviously already been out and taken part in this one if you are. Uh, with Salesforce, we had local artist Christina Ward from Colors of Conservation sketch out some designs on these picnic tables. And then we basically did a paint by numbers type approach to a team building event. And I think this was one of the most fun events. People had a lot of fun with these and the tables look great. So we're really excited about that. And just a side note, I just ordered uh, the material to build five more picnic tables that will be doing more of these again. So in my spare time, I like to play with power tools. So now we're gonna travel down to what was the very first section that we opened. So uh, this is the commercial core of Buckhead here in the middle. So we're right behind the Buckhead wall, this section here. And we actually had a design challenge here. Um, it, the design called for cable railings to be put in directly over where we had conduit run for future lighting or other needs. And if you're any of you are electrical engineers, you know that if you're running conduit, you have to have junction boxes so you can pull the conduit. Well, those were right under the railing. So that didn't make sense because you'd have to remove an entire railing of cable to get to them. So this is one of those times where it was real fun to be a youngish, not so much anymore but um, female out dealing with contractors on site building a project. Uh, it was quite entertaining because between me, our designer and our contractor, we came up with a public art program, a kids art program that we turned into a community event. We did a call to artists from our local schools. We had something like 125 submissions from seven local schools. And this is some of the artwork that those kids submitted. These are actually the winning um, ones. And then these are the kids when we did the unveiling ceremony, which was complete with elected officials, tears, grandparents. It was fantastic. Um, the kids loved this event. And in fact, um, Katie Meyer in this top picture has come back to us and wants to do this event uh, in another section, section of Path 400 for her Gold Star program. So it's really exciting to see how that um, program has created ownership with our local kids. And this is what those art pieces of art are intended to do. The light comes through the panels and then reflects the design straight down onto the concrete. So it's really cool and we are very excited about um, <clears throat> the, layout, the opportunity we provided for the kids there and just had a great time with it. And now before we go to our next slide, we have another poll question for you. So which of the following is not a hazard in a bird habitat as noted by Audubon? So which one of these is not a problem? Mm 
Okay, this is getting some people. Tricky, tricky. All right. A few more, a few more votes are coming in. Take my opportunity to do product placement and refresh. <laughs> Gotta have the Mountain Dew. Yep. Okay, I'm gonna end the poll. Okay. Wow, across the board. So the answer is highways. So uh, the title of the slide makes it readily apparent that some of you knew the answer to that poll and other, uh, others of you, well, maybe not. Mm -hmm. An adjacent highway is not a problem for becoming a certified sanctuary because Path 400 has been designated as a sanctuary between Old Ivy and, and Lenox Roads. So all of you bird watchers out there have a local place to go during those lunch breaks whenever we all get back into the office. And so another quick poll for you here is um, actually before I do that, it was um, local bird enthusiast Joan Loeb is um, who worked with us to nominate Path 400 for this consideration and she lives right on the trail and you can go out, you'll see her out there pretty regularly with her binoculars. And as you can see, the four criteria that are really the most important ones are the food sources, water sources, shelter, and then just the general size enough to have a habitat. But it's also interesting to keep some of these bird friendly practices in mind of things that you need to do. And I particularly found the no cats designation to be quite entertaining on that. So now it's time for the next poll question. So can you name this bird? And I'll give you a hint. I have a special affinity for it. It should be easy. Okay. Are they getting it, Katie? Oh, yeah, this one, the, I think they're good guessers on this one. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm gonna go ahead and end okay. the poll. It is the common starling. <laughs> All righty, being a starling myself, I kind of thought that was funny. And of course, being in this section, we need to provide sanctuary for those birds. So, um, this is one, another one of the art events that we did because we had a need and we had some fun and we had the opportunity to put art on it. So why not bring it all together? These are some of the handcrafted originals painted by our friends at Vacation Express and Memor. I believe one of these in here might be yours. And I think Salesforce actually ha had some involvement in these as well. So we just love these things and is interesting to note to why birds matter um, and a couple of key things that you might not know birds are pollinators which i never really thought of that um, they also control insect outbreaks and being the magnet for mosquitoes that i am i've now developed a new affinity for birds they create nesting cavities for other species and they help rid the world of disease through scavenger cleanup so those are some pretty good reasons for um, you know, why we want to protect that habitat. So now we switch to a totally different artistic medium, photography. We learned early on that we had to create reasons for people to get it out on Path 400. Amazingly, it's not an if you build it, they will come kind of scenario for most folks. So we created this photography contest. Here's some of my personal favorites. I especially love the Hot Wheels next to the rush hour traffic. I think that's great. And Sir Charles Doodle has his own Instagram account and is a, a loyal follower of Path 400. And uh, be looking for us to do another one of these contests. This is a perfect thing to do during the um, lockdown situation. So this summer you'll be seeing some more opportunities to feature your artwork. So now we get down to the commercial core of Buckhead. So do you all remember this ugly concrete wall that was just sitting there for years, looking all dingy and begging to be tagged? Well, it was us who saw the beauty in that wall and decided that it could actually be something pretty cool. Um, and we actually convinced GDOT that we could sandblast their wall without doing any harm to it. And well, we kind of had our fingers crossed behind our back when we were promising them that. We were terrified during this construction because it was, um, you don't know what's in this wall. You know, it's a poured concrete wall, so there could be air pockets. And when you're sandblasting, 
you can actually hit one of those air pockets and break out a whole chunk of the wall. So this was a, a pretty um, nail biting part of when we were doing it. So there you go, we're seeing kind of how we laid it out. And here's the finished wall today. And what's awesome about this is this has really become an icon for Buckhead and it's even been featured in some of the uh, local shows that have been filmed here, including the Real Housewives of Atlanta. So then we move into Tower Place Park. Um, so this is a park that was developed by Region Partners, but what's critical about it is it's also the park that makes our financials look really, really good because uh, the, we had an easement donated by Region Partners to us to keep this in a conservation fund in perpetuity. What's amazing about that is this site was developed and zoned or was zoned to be developed as a hotel. So it had a huge value to it. And region partners saw the value, understood the need to create these kinds of park spaces and dedicated that, donated that easement over to us to ensure that it stays this way for a long time to come forever. And now we're gonna go through to the kind of south side of the commercial core, come in really down in the Peachtree Park area. And if some of you have been out there, well, 73% of you said you've been on Path 400 and I'd probably bet like 72% of you have probably ignored this sign and gone ahead and broken in to sneak peek in this area. And, you know, I'm not asking for anybody to, you know, to, to uh, fess up here, but I, I know you've been there. Um, so anyway, you're entering no man's land right now. Uh, we're still, not open yet. I know many of you joined us for our sneak peek event last October, which was originally supposed to be our opening event, and it's still not open, but we're, we're close. We're about probably two months, two months out to getting it open. And part of the challenge, just to give you an idea of why it's taken so long through here, I'm just going to list the agencies that we're dealing with in here. So you've got Norfolk Southern, MARTA, the Federal Transit Administration, the Georgia DOT, and the City of Atlanta all have rights to the land in here. So that gives you an idea of the complexity that we're dealing with. So once you get beyond the, uh, the buck there, this is what you will see, and you can see this from the highway already. But what's gonna happen here is this. We are actually, this is the most visible part of Path 400 from the highway. So we wanna make sure that we are uh, creating that visibility to remind drivers that they should be doing something other than sitting in traffic, maybe get out on their bikes. And this is the feel that it'll have from the trail side. What's great about this is we have basically repurposed sound wall and fence and made it artistic. So in our usual, kind of approach we try to find pretty ways to do some of the things that otherwise could be quite ugly then heading down a little bit further um, south this is really the most surprising part of path 400 we have a detention pond that um, gdot created as part of when they built um, the highway and what is really kind of amazing here is right be between the highway two mortar rail lines and the freight train down below, you've got this wetland. And these are real pictures without filters that are taken. These two here are of that wetland. And it's amazing because every day you go out there, it looks entirely different. It's been incredible to me to see how much change there is there. Over here on the left, you'll see we worked with the city of Atlanta's watershed folks to put in duck boxes. And then on the, um, Right side here, you'll see some of our trail users who are uh, causing us a little bit of a maintenance problem. Um, and then up here on the top, this is a really special um, feature to us. It's a plaza that is dedicated to Maxine Rock. And Maxine Rock was one of the founders of the PATH Foundation. And she died earlier this year. And she's also a longtime resident of Buckhead. And tremendous lady, uh, total fire. Uh, firebrand and powerhouse and so this plaza is a tribute to her memory and it's a fantastic place to sit and look out into the wetland to observe some of the changes it's also a great place to see where when it is snake mating season if you look just down below here you'll often see uh, many snakes this is my favorite part of this whole tour 
So um, this is our first large scale mural. So we knew we wanted a mural in this area, but we really didn't know what it should look like other than we wanted it to reflect the juxtaposition of the nature versus all that infrastructure. So we worked with a company called ABV and did a call to artists. We had, I forget the total number, but a whole bunch of artist submittals. And we chose this one, Krista Jones. And um, this is us, me out with her, just talking about what we wanted to see in the artwork. Then this is the table being set. So the initial wall being painted. She's getting a little more going here. It's kind of funny to me of how much more paint she has all over her as these pictures progress. And here's the outcome. This is our, it's called Great Blue. Um, and this mural is huge. This picture doesn't really give you an idea of the scale. It's 20 feet tall and 95 um, feet long. And it took six days to paint it. And it was all pretty much, Jonesy did it all by herself. And it is just, fabulous. I can't wait until you can all get out on there to see it. And then this is another part of the trail that um, that little brick building is the one you see as you're driving on the highway. And um, I'd like to draw your attention to, you know, the picture on the right really gives you an idea of one of our challenges in this section. When you're working with a public transit agency, um, one of the things that you find out real quick is that they are really hypersensitive to security and they are subject to homeland security requirements. So to you and me, that translates to a whole bunch of cameras, a whole bunch of fences and a lot of money. So these are all, all these are camera poles. And then all this fence has been put in and it didn't help that we had a bunch, GDOT did a bunch of truth clearing on the other side. So we've kind of got this exposed fence here. So of course, in our usual fashion, we're going to say, nope, we're not gonna let it be ugly. So we're gonna yarn bomb that thing. We actually were supposed to have had an event during right after lockdown to do this. So we'll be rescheduling it. But this is the approach we're going to take to making that fence, turn it from, instead of being an eyesore that gives a prison vibe to this whole section, turning it into something cool that we actually kind of like. So look for that one to come. Then headed down to the top of Miami Circle. So this is where Eclipse to Luna is, if any of you have been up there. Um, right now, it's pretty ugly. And you can't really tell that Path 400 is even up here. So we are working through some design right now to develop a gateway in here. And these are some of the options that are under consideration right now. We haven't selected them and I think some of our input has been these might be a little too Vegasy for Buckhead. So, but we are um, working on this and definitely do wanna make sure that we create this entrance here and make it a signature anchor for Miami Circle because this is really, the part of Path 400 where we have the opportunity to be more like the East Side Beltline, um, because all of those galleries and everything that are up in here have the back loading dock areas and the ability to redevelop and provide that kind of activation that you see around Krog Street Market and um, Pont City Market down on the Beltline. And then the next part is uh, this is an interesting part. So. Um, We've come to the most unique and a little bit weird section of Path 400. So it's located between Miami Circle and the QT on Sydney Marcus. And um, the Marion High Rise, which is a senior high rise um, that the Atlanta Housing Authority owns and runs, is uh, right on the end of it. The, pre the um, residents of that high rise are primarily Russians and Koreans. And as we found when we came in to build this part of the trail, they had basically gardened every little section of land that was available in there and used all reclaimed materials to do it. So everything from Coke bottles to um, milk jugs to any of the barbed wire from fences, it's all in there used to create these gardens. So we decided to, that we really liked that and wanted to encourage that because it really showed ownership of that area and it was, it's really theirs. So we did a, an event where we partnered with the city of Atlanta's Office of Sustainability and built these um, 
these raised planting beds and we had volunteers from Rubicon, Jones Lang LaSalle, Lockton, the Housing Authority and Integral, all that came out to help us fill those beds, plant them and get them, them uh, turned over to the residents. And I was just out on the trail probably about two weeks ago and they've, you know, the seasons changed, they're all replanted and they look fantastic. So we really love this part. Um, I will highly recommend you go through it here and look at some of the gardens and you may, might want to just kind of pay attention to what's planted in some of those gardens because there's some interesting, questionably legal things in there. So quite fun. So now we're going down to the southern end. So I'm bringing the map back up because as I showed you in the beginning, the green dots where we were so and emphasized how important these are. So this is where we are now. So this is where um, Peachtree Creek Greenway comes in from basically the Buford Highway corridor. You have Path 400 coming down the green line that you see here. And then this Buford Highway, this is following Peachtree Creek follows the North Fork of the Peachtree Creek and it goes all the way up through Shambly and, and um, what's my town, Brookhaven, and then goes out towards Mercer University. Then you also have the South Fork Conservancy, which basically goes off the South Fork of the creek. And you can see here, path, this is Path 400. They are coming in and building a bridge that will go across the creek to allow you to access the meadow over here. And then the other, the Peachtree Creek Greenway one that we just showed you comes in from this side. And then the next slides, I'm going to show you how the belt line will come in from this side. So this is that junction of all those regional trails that is so important to the overall network of trails. So this is looking at it a little differently. So the belt line just released um, literally two weeks ago, um, their alignment. And this is the alignment of how they are going to come in. So just to orient you, um, this is Piedmont Road. And then you've got kind of Buford Highway Spring Connector and 85 right here together and Ansley Golf Club down here. So the Beltline comes up around the Ansley Golf Club and then it splits. The purple line is going to be the trail alignment and then the orange is going to end up being more the transit alignment that'll go straight up to Marta up at Lindbergh. So the trail is going to go over the highway and cross over, these are two rail lines, two freight rail lines, a MARTA line, and something else that's in there that has got to basically thread the needle to get through. Then it's going to be down on grade here to come around. This is where Sweetwater is. So it'll come around the outside of the district. This is actually a um, conservation easement, so the trail will be running along that. Then it'll split to come up over Peachtree Creek to get on the north side of the creek. This is up, this is Passion City Church, if that helps any of you get oriented. And then it comes under Piedmont Road to connect up to Path 400, right where that bridge was that I showed you in the previous slide. So this is huge. They actually had 42 different alignments at one point in time. So to have this down to one is fantastic. Um, this is what it's going to look like. This is concept. It's probably not going to be a gerbil trail like it looks, but on this image, you are actually sort of hovering over the Sweetwater uh, Brewery roof and you're looking south. So this is Midtown over here to the left and then downtown straight ahead. So you see the highway over here to your left and the rail line in the middle. So they're weaving over to drop down on the back side of the armor development. Then this is the section that's along the conservation easement. So it's going to be pretty simple through here, a typical trail section, um, just like you'd see on regularly Path 400. And it, they will preserve the on-street parking. So for those of you that are uh, maybe Coyote Logistics people or other folks that are down here, we know the parking is an issue in this area. So they are making sure to preserve that. And then this is what it could look like as it comes over Peachtree Creek. So going up to the north side of Peachtree Creek with Buckhead up in the distance. So that takes you to the end of our tour. And just to give you an idea of how far you've walked on this, you just logged 10,400 steps and burned 
520 calories on our tour today. So I really hope you learned a few things that you didn't know before. And I'm really glad to have had you join us for the tour today. And you should definitely, after walking this way, this whole thing, 5.2 miles, you should be in shape for your virtual 5K for Pebble Tossers. So hopefully I've warmed you up and given you a, a fun way to earn some points for the day. And um, I'll take some, did any questions come in on the chat as I was going along? Yes. Did I need uh, to address? I had one question from uh, Reed that says, uh, are there plans to improve Garrison Drive where it crosses the Marta tracks? It's wide, but only has a sidewalk on one side. Garrison where it crosses. Um, so the trail, it, where there will be a connection that goes up in that general area. So they don't have the, it's just that concept right now. So they haven't really um, said what it will be. So that's, that's right, uh, right in here. Um, but it is going to get up to the Lindbergh Marta station. And one thing I didn't mention is we are working to develop a spur line across Morosco to get to Path 400 as well. So you'll have a nice loop in here that you can use as well. There was an earlier question too from Allison on the old Ivy Park plans. They were wondering when are we planning to do the fitness tunnel? Is there a timeline on that? So I've got the grant in hand. Um, it's really just a when we can actually get to getting it done. Um, we've, it'll take some programming or permitting activity to get it done. And it is GDOT in the bridge structure that we're talking about. So that'll add some complexity. But my hope is to be late this year, next year, that we get it done. Um, another That's exciting is the uh, timeline for Wardens Park to um, Mountain Road. That's actually coming up. Um, <clears throat> so we are in, we're finalizing design right now. And so that would be this section right, right here. Um, we're finalizing, finalizing the design. We will have that wrapped up by the end of the year. Um, we have federal funds dedicated to that project that are actually programmed a little bit. They're a year out, but we're, pulling them forward. Um, so we plan to get under construction late next year, most likely. So with the permitting that we'll have to do to get better, to get use the federal funds, it'll take that amount of time. But into next year is when we would be starting the construction for that. That's gonna be really cool. That's a um, really complicated section to build with all those bridges in there. So really excited about it. And I actually should let you know that just yesterday, we received um, $3.2 million to fund the extension, the construction of the extension up from Lordens up to the city limits to connect to uh, Sandy Springs. So that's a big deal. So that actually is the last chunk we needed to get funded. So that's now, um, we've now got it. And for the Peachtree Park, um the newest section that we're about to open, are we, do we have a timeline that we can say for everyone about when that might be open soon? I'm shooting for two months. Um, you know, it's, it's a little bit difficult to control that because particularly with COVID right now, some of the, um, some of what we're waiting on is material delivery. So that's been impacted, but um, two months is my goal. And it started uh, pouring while we're on our tour. Yep. yep. Uh, good thing yep. we're, this is a virtual walking tour. Right. <laughs> um, Shelly wants to know, um, are there volunteer projects for us uh, as individuals or for our office to do something with the path? Of and course. I'm going to answer that one. So 120% yes. We've worked with uh, several different employers through uh, to host volunteer events on Path 400. We have parks that need to be built and plants that need to be planted. And we're working with Hands On Atlanta right now um, to come up with some opportunities that uh, fall under the social distancing kind of requirements that are in this kind of strange space for everyone. Um, so we're going to be having a lot of projects happening this summer. Please, please, please shoot me an email if you're interested in learning more about what those projects are or how to get involved with Livable Blackhead. Um, obviously, the number one thing as an individual, please become a member of uh, Livable Blackhead. There's so many great opportunities to volunteer and 
um, we would love to have you as a member supporting us. So um, that's a very easy one. And then um, email me uh, for interest on the um, volunteering stuff. So, uh, and then I also am going to give you guys the code for today. It's 21441 for your 500 points for today. Um, and then uh, awesome we will stuff. be also a uh, question. We will be posting this um, uh, recording on our website, I believe. Um, our YouTube we can channel. send out the YouTube channel. So we can send it out to everyone um, yeah. on Monday. Absolutely. And then um, the last bonus challenge for, uh, well, aside from a 5K tomorrow, if you haven't done it yet, is uh, a survey for Buckhead Walks. It's 500 points, and um, that'll go out um, in the next 30 minutes or so. So look for that in your inbox, and um, it should only take you a couple minutes to finish. So give Yes, I think there was confusion. The Webinar today is 350 points, and then the taking the survey is the extra 500 points. Sorry, yeah, I think you said 500 earlier. So. Thank you, Katie. My apologies. All right, well, um, it was great uh, seeing all of your chats come up, and um, I actually learned a couple of new things about Path 400, so thank you, Denise, for sharing so much. Um, it makes me excited to have more volunteer events and to work with everyone on um, making the path usable for everyone. Um, oh, we've got another question. When will Path 400 start the construction phase of the Sandy Springs section? Um, so I don't know the exact answer on that yet. We are working with them. Um, they are doing their final design right now. They had the initial concept work completed and then you have to take that to construction documents. Um, they did also receive some funding for construction in this the same place that we got our 3.2 million, but I don't believe they received all of it. So that is a um, key part of the timeline line there is what their local funding because it is part of their TSPLOST. And I believe their TSPLOST is actually oriented with a second tier of projects that if the revenues don't come in to the levels that they're expected to be, the second tier projects don't move forward. So, and I'm pretty sure their portion is on their second tier. So, remains to be seen, um, but it's um, probably my best guess would be, let's see, what month, what year is this, 2020? I'd say it's probably 24, when you'd see that, 24, 25. Awesome. Um, I think that is all of the questions that we haven't answered. Um, did we, the Adina Drive section, um, when is the construction on that? So Adena Drive is largely done. Um, it's uh, We widened the sidewalks and work with the developers as those developments came in. Uh, we do still have one piece to go that will be from Lindbergh down to Garson. So it's a small little block. Um, that one will be later this year when we get that under construction. Awesome. Great. great. Thanks, Thank you everyone. all so much. All right. Um, Have a well, great weekend. Thank you guys so much. And if there's anything that we haven't answered, send it to us an email, um, and we are happy to send an email back and kind of give you more details. Oh, uh, Denise, Laura Lee asks, uh, regarding the gate at Miami Circle, just a thought, but have you considered using a replica of a Buckhead landmark as the entrance to Path 400 from Miami Circle? Um, she could totally see something majestic like a brick silhouette outline of the swan house there with a cutout to enter onto the path. Um, Neat idea. Yeah. Yeah. I love that too. Great thought though. Yeah, I like that. You want to come design it, Laura Lee? <laughs> Sorry, Laura Lee. I thought it was a question and I just started reading it. No, it's great. a great idea. <laughs> she you. said no she doesn't want to design it <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> you can just fund it then i'll settle for that yeah we'll, just, we'll, we'll put it on aubrey daniels tab and um i'm just kidding <laughs> uh, we'll definitely do that yes. drinks all we'll, around we'll name a drink after you if you get it funded <laughs> okay Thanks to everyone. This was a great webinar. Thank you, Denise. Yeah.
All right. Thank it's you. been a great challenge. Anyone that's still hanging on, um, thank you so much for being with us this whole month. It's been great. So um, good luck on your 5K tomorrow and don't forget about your survey. Yes, please take it. Bye.